a spark sets it off. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. The five main causes of World War I, militarism, the alliance system, industrialization, imperialism, and nationalism, serve merely as barrels of gunpowder without any fuse or ways to be lit, might have remained unexploded had one event not taken place. In 1912, the countries on the Balkan Peninsula, Greece, Serbia, Herzegovina, and Montenegro, were successful in defeating the Ottoman Empire, an ally of Germany in the Triple Alliance, and taking large amounts of land away from them. During the next year, these countries fought with each other for control of the peninsula. Austria-Hungary, also an ally of Germany in the Triple Alliance, was concerned about having these countries fighting with each other on their border, and perhaps spreading the desire for independence to other people who were under the control of Austria-Hungary, such as Bosnia. Austria-Hungary had wanted to control the Balkan Peninsula for many years, and almost went to war with Russia, who saw themselves as the protectors of the region in 1908. Serbia hoped to create a nation for all the Slavic people of the region. Austria-Hungary, who shared a border with Serbia, saw this as a threat and thought they might lose land if this nation could be created. The heir to the throne of Austria-Hungary, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, and his wife Sophie, went to Sarajevo, Bosnia, to inspect the royal troops stationed there, but also as a way to create some goodwill with the people there. What he found were members of nationalist groups who wanted independence from Austria-Hungary and who saw their chance to send a message about their futures. On June 28, 1914, the Archduke and his wife rode through the streets of Sarajevo in an opened-roof car, unwilling to listen to reports of threats on his life. As the couple rode from the train station to the town hall, there were seven different assassins waiting for their opportunity, recruited by the Serbian nationalist group called the Black Hand. The first two would-be assassins got scared and never carried out their part of the plan. The third saw his explosive device bounce off the back of the Archduke's car, exploding behind it, wounding a number of Austrian officers in the car behind him. When the Archduke arrived at the town hall, he seemed unfazed by the attack, not wanting to appear weak. He gave his speech as planned, with his notes speckled with the blood of one of his officers. Franz Ferdinand rejected a suggestion to cut his day short, wanting instead to visit the wounded officers at the hospital, with his wife insisting to go with him. The problem with that was that no one told the driver of his car of the change of plans, and when he followed the original motorcade route, he was forced to turn around when he made his, a wrong turn on his way to the hospital. It was at this point that Gavrilo Princip one of the assassins carried out his part of the plan and fired two shots, hitting the Archduke in the neck and his wife in the stomach. Both of them died shortly after being shot. Princip tried to take his own life but failed and was spared the death penalty because he was under the age of 20. When news of the assassination reached Vienna, Austria, the emperor of the Austro-Hungarian Empire blamed Serbia for the assassination, even though it had taken place in Bosnia. For years, Austria-Hungary had been looking for an excuse to crush Serbia, and now they had the excuse that they needed. Austria-Hungary's ally, Germany, was also horrified by the assassination and gave Austria-Hungary a blank check, saying that they would support whatever action Austria-Hungary took. After weeks of diplomats in countries across Europe trying to avoid war, Austria-Hungary delivered an ultimatum, or a final set of demands, to Serbia. 
In order to avoid war, Serbia had to end all anti-Austrian activity in their country and punish any Serbian involved in the plot to assassinate the Archduke. Most significantly, Austria wanted to be able to enter Serbia to conduct its own investigation. Surprisingly, Serbia agreed to all of the demands, except allowing Austria to enter Serbia. But because they did not accept all of the demands, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia on July 28, 1914, exactly one month after the assassination of the Archduke. When they did so, the alliance system sprung into action, and World War I began. Russia, which saw themselves as the protectors of the Slavic people, and therefore Serbia, declared war on Austria-Hungary, a country they had almost gone to war with six years earlier. As Russia mobilized or prepared for war, Germany declared war on Russia. France, Russia's ally in the Triple Entente, saw an opportunity to get back Alsace-Lorraine from Germany, which they had lost in the Franco-Prussian War, and refused Germany's demand to stay out of the conflict. When this happened, Germany declared war on France. Italy and England at this point stayed out of the war. Germany was now in a difficult position because they faced the possibility of a two-front war, meaning that they could be having to fight the Russians in the east and the French in the west at the same time. Years before the war began, General Arthur Schlieffen designed a battle strategy that would become known as the Schlieffen Plan that would work to prevent Germany from having to fight a two-front war. The plan argued that, given Russia's size, it would take time for them to mobilize their army. In that time, the Germans would focus their attention on defeating the French. In order to make that happen, on August 3, 1914, Germany invaded Belgium on their way to France. When they did this, England which had sworn to protect the neutrality of Belgium years earlier and was a member of the Triple Entente with France and Russia, declared war on Germany on August 4th, and what would become known as the Great War, or the War to End All Wars, or eventually World War I, had begun. The battle lines had now been drawn. The allies of England, France, and Russia stood on one side against the central powers of Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire.